All right, we're gonna use the big key on the wall because Mario does not know how to use the key apparently. That was where the lock really was. All right, uh, first thing we're gonna do, we could go to the worst level in the game. Actually, we can't, I think, is that 20 stars or 30? Door, what do you want from me? You want 30 stars, okay. We're gonna do the chandelier level. You guys won't believe what's in here. It was the sand the whole time. Oh man, Anakin Skywalker would be so upset. Oh, I almost made it. That was quite a maneuver we made to get over here. So, I effectively broke this level. You're supposed to have a timer the whole time. Timer is irrelevant, because we're getting coins. There are two stars here. One is a speed star, and the other is a coin star. Clearly, we want the speed star. That's why we're doing this. I mean, you guys figured that out already, though. Actually, there's a third star here later. The, the bonus stars, which I'm not going to bother with. We don't need no bonus stars in this house. They're just really hard, some of them. There's two of them I can't get, because while jumping in this game compared to later Mario games is a massive, massive, massive pain in the ass. And there's stars that require you to wall jump like 70 times consecutively. I can't do that. One, I'm old and don't have the hand-eye coordination to pull it off. And two, even when I, if I did, I still want to be able to do it. I'm old, give me a break, okay? My skill game days are behind me. Except maybe Diddy Kong Racing, because I'm just really good at that for reasons. Oh, no, we don't. No, I can still get that. Hold on. Yeah, we can still get that. Gonna, oh wait, no, I'm doing this a really stupid way. Uh, I'm gonna not get that coin. It'll make sense later. Ooh, we almost ran into uh, Porky there. That's his name, right? Porky? Porky's Pokies? Oh, it turns out I could have got that coin. I thought that was the last one. Oh, you know which one I missed? Oh, we're going for a bit of a walk. I don't know if I can pull it off. No, oh, McGrog, why? <laughs> There was a red coin at the very start of that level. We'll do the speed star, and then maybe I'll go back here later. Maybe we'll do it next time. 
You can't win every time. Sometimes you play the game right and you still lose because you forgot to touch the, the star at the very beginning of the level. Yeah, this one right here. Wait, no, I think I got that one. The other one, there's one in a box. Oh, I thought there was. Alright, don't matter. Time for an old speed Luigi. I'm trying to remember. So one at the start, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't recall where the eighth one is. Actually. Oh, the piranha pond. The stupid bird would not jump out of the hole. I remember. <laughs> Guys, remember the bird? Oh, I saw a video. I can't find it. It makes me sad. I was just scrolling through uh, the YouTube timeline. Unfortunately, it wasn't on my computer. Or I'd just look in my history. But it was a video of a parrot, and he was just talking himself up the whole time. He's just sitting there going, "Oh yeah, I'm the bird. Who's the bird? I'm the bird." It's like it was, it was funny. Is there a bird outside? No, because I'm the bird. He was like saying shit like that. I could have. Maybe it's one of these ones. I know it involves. Yeah, there he is. Maybe he was there the whole time. I'm just dumb. That's believable. Okay, this is it for the Mysterious Woods music. Sorry, guys. Oh, there's a fella in a cage we can talk to to get a secret star. Oh, let's do the turtle race. I completely forgot to do that when I started the game. The old turtle race. We actually have to do this or a level we're about to come up to will glitch out. Because there's another turtle race. But that turtle race will use this turtle race's pathing. And it will be uncompletable. You can beat the turtle, he just never shows up, so he can't give you the star. You know what I think would be neat? I don't know how you'd pull it off. Like a Mario, an MMO type game that takes place in the Mario world. So it's like you get to pick, you can be a Koopa, you can be a Toad. You can be like a, a, um, a Goomba, that's what they're called. Oh, well, we lost the, the turtle race, so I might as well restart. I think you could pull it off if you did it as like a Paper Mario game. Mechanically, anyways. So you'd be able to, like, form your party, go into dungeons, and then it's, like, turn-based P... Turn-based PvE. I know that's how, uh, the Pokemon MMO works, is it uses, um... 
It uses the Game Boy games as a base somehow. So, like, imagine, imagine you took Paper Mario and you turned it into, like, a multiplayer MMO-type game, I guess. So you have your party, like, you you are the Koopster. Your best friend? He is a toad. You also have this random Goomba you picked up at the bar. And the three of you go through the Crystal Dungeon for some sweet loot. And maybe at the end, you guys get a sweet badge. And that Goomba you met, since he got the drop, he takes off with it. And then you and your buddy just got scammed. Making it a perfect MMO experience. What did we learn? Don't trust the random Goomba in the bar. He's gonna steal your badge. Only do quests with friends. Uh, what are we doing? We're swimming into the flooded cage. I don't know, that'd be pretty cool. Nintendo doesn't like fun, though. We... we all know that. I'm surprised they haven't tried to do a, like, a Pokemon Online yet. Actually, you know what would be the perfect setting for an MMO? Just Hyrule. It's already got fantasy. You're already good. And in that game, you are a Goron. Your best friend is Zora. And you go to the bar and you pick up a random deck you scrub. And you guys go through the water temple. At the end, you get some sweet loot. But because it was in the deck you scrub's name, he pieces out and does not give you your cut of share. And you got scammed. The perfect MMO experience. So it's like the same thing. Why the water temple? Because it was the first thing I thought up when I was telling the joke. So this star is pretty much the star we just did. Oh, I bamboozled it. I thought I was going the right way. Well, yeah, you always you always get betrayed. Don't do quests with not friends. That's how it goes. You don't get to murder the Deku, because he's a player character. You just get to sit there and cry, and then support doesn't do anything about it. Man, I want to get back into doing RuneScape raids. See, the problem is I suck at the game, so I need someone to carry me at the very end. I can't I tried doing a solo raid once, and I can get to the boss, but then I'm completely worthless. So I need my buddy to do it for me. He, he can solo it. I can do it with multiple people, because there's different strats. There's less you have to do, the more people you have. So the perfect uh, three-person raid is, uh... Well, for the one I'm talking about, anyway. Uh, raid's one. The three-person run is the easiest. You have one guy, his only job is to stand in the middle. Would you like to take a guess what job I do? It is that one, that is correct.
No, it's not entirely. You occasionally have to do other stuff. So, the one thing I hate about that game is it's very optimized. Because that's just how people are with video games these days. No fun allowed. Be optimal or go fuck yourself. I'm not a fan of that. So, everyone brings a whole bunch of gear in their inventory for that. I bring my one set and I'm good to go. So, I have a lot more room for potions and stuff. So, when I'm doing the thing where I'm just standing in the middle doing nothing, uh, if someone gets into trouble, I have extra shit that I just drop for them. I have saved runs doing that before. So there's a bit of validation there. Also, because if someone else dies, I am I'm done. Like, I I am fucked. We are not getting a reward. So I gotta keep the people that know what they're doing alive, and that's my strategy for video games. You know, carry carry yourself off the success of others. Yeah, I, I still do my role, so I'm still helping, but I can't solo the dungeons. That's actually one thing I like about uh, the most recent uh, dungeon raid they added, is uh, the more people you're with, the higher loot chance. Which isn't necessarily true for the... for the raids one. There's three different ones. Raids one is about middle ground. Raids 3 is the easiest. Raids 2 is the hardest. Funnily enough, the big rewards from Raids 2 are the least expensive. Every raid has a super weapon that you can get from it. Raids 1 is the bow. I talked about that already. Raids 2 gives you the melee weapon. And Raids 3 is the magic weapon. So funnily enough, the easiest one to get, the magic weapon, is the most expensive. And the hardest one to get, the melee weapon, is the cheapest. By a lot. I think the other two are over a billion. A billion gold. They're over a billion gold. The melee weapon is like... 350. 350 million, last time I looked. I had one for a bit, but then I, I sold it, because it got outclassed by another weapon that was worth significantly less. I might rebuy it. There's talks of buffing it, so I might rebuy it. Oh, that fish does damage? I thought he was scenery. So the buff is, uh, its current state, it uses charges to attack. And they floated the idea of letting you upgrade it so it just has infinite charges. The so thing is, when it's charged, it's good. When it's not charged, it's uh, middle ground. There's things you can use it for when it's not charged. But you, if you have it, you should definitely have it charged. But if you could just keep the thing charged at all times... Well, there you go. You don't have to worry about it. Because as it stands right now, there's a lot of places where... It costs more to use the weapon than you'd actually make. So it's like, why would you use it? The only place it's viable is at the raids, and then you gotta actually pull an item to make your money.
Oh, that was a weird noise. Oh, I can't believe I pulled that off. All right, it's the red coins. Ooh, four, six. That means we need two more. All right, fellas, let's look for these red coins. If anyone sees a red coin, please let me know, as I will probably end up going on some tangent that will make me not pay attention to the game. There's one in here, right? I thought there was. Oh, I thought that was a coin. That is a mushroom. And it was delicious. It got us our life back. Hey, nobody, are you still here? I have a nerd question for you. It's a D&D &D question, kind of. I don't think he's paying attention, guys. Or he died. He could have died. I don't think that's likely, though. Where are these damn frog coins, and why can't I find them? Uh, oh, oh, hold up. I see one. Gotta climb the stick. That's one thing I like about Mario 64, is when you pause the game, you get a kind of overview of the world. So you can use that to find coins, like this. I don't see it there. Could it be up here? No. I'm gonna check one spot. I don't know if I got this one. I don't think I did. There's one... No, we did get that one. Oh, I know where it is. There's a fancy gravestone over here. Yeah, it's in front of the grave. That was the last one, right? Yeah, we're doing good here, boys. We got one more course in level one. Let's go do the turtle race. Except hopefully we don't lose the turtle race. Oh, I bought a bag of chips today. That's it. There's not much else to that story. I didn't open them. I just bought them. Why would I open them? What kind of chips? Oh, you're here for that? But when I'm like, dude, I want to talk about D&D &D nothing? 
They're normal chips. Actually, they're the, the crunchy ones. The really, really crunchy ones. I, I believe uh, they're called kettle chips. But I want to say about D, well, not D and D, but just the uh, like tabletop role playing in general. You ever do like the Star Wars stuff? Because I know there's a uh, there's a Star Wars tabletop system. You you have no experience. You know what? My brother's into all that D&D shit. Maybe I should ask him. I remember Moose tried D&D once. Cause, uh, someone convinced him to do it. Might have been me, I don't remember. Well, no, cause Moose... So he went to play D&D, a friend of his was talking him into it and he's like yeah I'll do it so he went to go talk to uh like he did an interview with the DM and the guy's like all right you got a minute tell me what you got and Moose is like what what do you mean and then he's like no nah, that guy was an asshole so that kind of turned him off in the whole thing and also we had another friend we let him try to run a, he ran like a Pokemon D&D &D, and I was told I didn't show up because I knew it would be a shit show and I was told believe it or not it was a shit show and that kind of turned Moose off from ever doing any of that stuff anyways I don't want to play like a space themed D&D I like Star Wars. I'm down for Star Wars. Take a guess what my character would be in a Star Wars setting. Take a wild guess what my character would be. Twi- no, I wouldn't want to be a friggin' Twi'lek. I'd want to be a B1. Heavily modified B1, mind you, but a B1. I would need to have, like, some kind of... Like, the backstory, I would need to have some kind of... Enhancements so I don't get insta-gibbed. As B1s tend to do. It's funny, I was watching, so there's a Star Wars, an animated Star Wars, it's pure Disney, because it's like Star Wars Resistance. It's about the sequel trilogy. The only thing that even remotely had me interested in that was that there was a character that was a B1. And he pretty much died instantly when they got him. So I watched that episode, and then I was done. You have no idea about the Star Wars races? Well, Star Wars isn't exactly my... Well, I know a lot, but when I say my thing, I mean... I don't know everything about Star Wars. I know a fair amount of Star Wars races. I can name a couple. There, Well, there's the Twi'leks. Those are the, the ladies with the tentacles on their heads. Uh, there's the Tagruda. Those are the other ladies with the tentacles on their heads. One of them's green and blue. Those would be the Twi'leks. They're like green and blue and red and purple. And then the Tagrudas, those are... That's like Ahsoka Tano. She's a Tagruda. And actually, there's an inaccuracy with her, uh, character. 
It's been consistent through all her portrayals, though. Uh, she's supposed to have fangs, but she doesn't. So, like, what's the deal with that? There's a, um... Togruta have, like, venom-injecting fangs. It would scare kids? I guess so. But then another weird thing is... Twi'leks don't have fangs. But in The Mandalorian, we see one? And she does. So... What's the deal there? <laughs> I don't think Shock T had fangs either, but you don't really see her in any of the movies. I think she only showed up in deleted scenes. And in every deleted scene she was in, she was being killed. You don't think they're following the lore closely? Well, that's one of those like little things that doesn't really matter. Oh, that's real. Every appearance of Shock T is just her getting killed. She gets killed by General Grievous. She gets killed by Anakin. That's in the same movie, by the way. Later, she she's killed in, like, three of the games, I think. I know she gets killed by Starkiller. Okay, yeah, so this is the level that... Why am I even here? This is the bad one. You know why? It's because I love this jump right here. It's so fun. Anyways, yeah, Star Wars races. So there's the Twi'leks, there's the Togruta. There's the Zabrak. That's what Darth Maul is. Except he's... he's a Dathomirian Zabrak. There's a difference. Because if you look at him, and you look at a different Zabrak, they're very different. Because he's like red and black. And Zabrak's from... I don't actually know where they're from. But they're like... They don't look like Darth Maul. They still have the horns. That's really the only similarity. What else is there? There's the Jawas. There's the Gungans. I know about the Gungans. Um... What are some, like, really odd ones that no one would know? I don't... I can't think of anything that's, like, really out there. There's the Mon Cala. I know they're, they, uh... They share a planet with, um... I forget... Who they share pl I know what they look like, I don't remember what they're called. They have like squid faces. Uh, I'm trying to think, what? What other races? Is this? There's too many of them. And then there's a lot that only appear in, like, the Old Republic, and it's, like... I, I don't know any of that shit. I think I named a good amount, though, considering, uh... My, uh, very limited knowledge of Star Wars. Oh, I forgot about the Chiss. 
That's what Admiral Thrawn is. The blue fellas. They're completely blue. They got blue skin, blue hair, red eyes. They're kind of cool, because all of them are... F when they're children, they're force... They have force powers and stuff. But they grow out of it. Most of the time. You know, Admiral Thr I fucking hope so. He's the main character of Star Wars for the next, like, 15 years. That seems like a terrible idea. No, he's a really good character. Also, everyone likes Admiral Thrawn. He's very popular. Isn't he a bad guy? Not... Really? So... Alright, here we go. He is from a faction called the Chiss Ascendancy, which is obviously their empire. Aren't him and Tarkin friends? No, him and Tarkin are not friends. He actually had a major disagreement with uh, Tarkin, because Tarkin wanted to build the Death Star, and Thrawn insisted it was a really, really dumb idea, and that they should be building the TIE Defender instead. Anyways, let me tell the story, just shut up! So the Chiss Ascendancy. It is a empire from the Unknown Regions, which is the region that you can't really travel to. Space travel, there, there's like, routes and stuff. So anyways, he's from the Chiss Ascendancy, and his job is essentially he is the ambassador from there to the Empire. And at the time of the Clone Wars up to, well, now, in the timeline, the stuff they're working on, the Chiss are fighting, like, an, an entity from another galaxy. So his job is to secure an alliance with the Empire for when that shit goes down. So, like, on paper, he's trying to save the galaxy. But, like, he's working with the bad guys, yes. It's like an enemy of my enemy situation. And the reason he likes the Empire is because of how, uh... How militarized it is, because... They're gonna need it. Is the Empire the bad guys? Um... Yes. I am biased there, you know, because I like the Confederacy. Confederacy does not like the Empire, because the Empire is the Republic. And the Republic was the Empire in everything but name when it was around. Like, that was the entire reason the Confederacy existed in the first place. Because first they were like, hey, um, the Republic is corrupt, it's going to be a dictatorship in, like, ten years, we're leaving. Spoilers for A New Hope. Those guys were right. Um, first of all, legally they were allowed to leave the Republic. The Republic was voluntary. So they had done nothing wrong at that point. But then the Republic was like, you can't leave, we're declaring war. 
But then you gotta remember, the reason they did that is because Palpatine was in charge of the entire thing. That he was behind the entire thing. If he wasn't, the Confederacy would have won the Clone Wars. Easily. Easily. Because they had the money. They had the numbers. They... That's all they needed. They had the bigger economy and just the amount of bosses they could replace. How quickly they could replace them was insane. For every battle droid that was destroyed, they had made a thousand more in that time. So there was no way for them to lose. And the Republic couldn't do that. Because the clones needed training and they needed to be cloned and all that stuff. It took a bit. And the Confederacy was backed by literally every corporation in the universe. So they just had unlimited money. You want to know something that's crazy? You know the the destroyer droids with the shields, the little rolly fellas. One of those, I think it was one. It was either one of those or a squad of them. Either way. They were about the same price as a Star Destroyer. Yeah, it, it was nuts how expensive they are. And the, the Star Destroyers, uh, the Venator-class Star Destroyer, that's the one that you see in the Clone Wars. That one actually costs more than the Imperial Star Destroyer. The Super Battle Droids, they're a completely different thing. They weren't really... They were slightly more expensive than B1s. That's the B2 Super Battle Droid. And I guess it depends on the model you see, because there's um, the standard B2 Battle Droid with the wrist laser. And then there's the B2 Haw, which has a... I think it's a missile launcher instead. Here we go. If you look at a picture of it, he's got like a massive gun instead of an arm. Where your normal B2 just has a little laser wrist thingy. Uh, we need one more red coin. I feel like it's not in the pyramid because there's death down there. Oh, I'm down to play any kind of tabletop games. We tried to play a Mario one once. Moose ruined that, actually. What game are you fucking talking about? I'm just talking about Star Wars. I'm not talking about a game. I was just going off about robots. The setting for the Star Wars, it's wherever the fuck you want it to be, I guess.
lost me for a minute there. I just wanted to ramble about robots. You can talk about the gonk droid. They're pretty cool. My favorite fact is the original gonk droid was just two, um... He was just two plastic bins glued together, and then there was a dude in there. <laughs> they just went to, like, a hardware store and bought the things to make them. He's two storage bins. Uh... A flexible uh, dryer vent, and then a bunch of doodads they added to him. You know, next convention I go to, I should just be a gonk droid and get the stuff to make that costume pretty easily. I'd make sure it wouldn't have little holes for eyes, so the thing I would do... I'm going all out. I'm gonna put a camera on the front of it, and then a display screen on the inside. That's how I would see. Sounds dangerous? How? Literally, how can that be dangerous? Feel you need your vision? Yeah, that's why you have... You'd be able to see it. Why, well, you think I'm just gonna have a forward-facing camera? Second of all, at conventions, when people are wearing weird costumes, they give them space. You know, one good thing I can say about the conventions is that people are cool like that. And then Moose would have to be overtime. Because his job is to... He has to, like... He's... What's the word I'm looking for? He has to take care of me at conventions. I have a habit of, uh... Getting very drunk and wandering away. And he, he has to prevent that from happening. It, I'm a bit of a bastard, though. Because... I write him down as, uh, in my emergency person in America, which, uh, I, I gotta explain that. When you are a foreigner and you visit America, you have an option to list someone as your accountability buddy, and if anything happens to you, they're responsible. And I always, always sign Moose up for that. Without his permission. Yeah, so Moose has to make sure I get home. And I don't do stupid things. Which is easy enough. I'm not that hard to, uh, to, like, handle. I make it sound worse than it is. I think he'd even agree with that, all memes aside. He'd probably say it's not really a big deal. His other friends cause way more problems than I do. I need to visit the States again. It's been a very, very long time. That would be COVID. And actually, do I really want to visit? 
Like, that entire country is a circus these days. Sorry, not sorry. I'm just saying how it is. Oh. Lurking, but that's just too true. How's oh, road? It's good. You're free to lurk. I should actually add something to the rules that says don't bother lurkers. I meant to do that, because I'm very aware there are people that they just want to chill and have something in the background, and they don't want to be bothered. I had that before. Anyways, yeah, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, we're just talking about random things, is what it is. Yeah, the last time I went to the States, that was... Um... I think 2016? So, yeah, it's been a while. And the only reason I remember that... So I was at MAGFest, which is a convention that happens in Washington, D.C. Am I Canadian? Maybe. I live there. I'll give you that much. I do not identify as such. Oh, uh, we're gonna die here because this thing is really, really angry. Close enough. I'd much rather be in uh, Europe. But this is where uh, this is where we ended up. Same. Well, it depends. Well, we left for a good reason. So, my great-great-grandfather had just finished fighting in World War I. And then he was chilling at his home in uh, Bavaria. And then a man by the name, you might have heard of him, a man named Adolf Hitler started uh, shouting about things and he was like, you know what? I'm not fighting in another war. And then we left. And now we're here. But it's safe to go back now. You know, that was like 80 years ago. We just haven't, we just haven't gotten around to uh, leaving. I gotta say, though, the foresight of that man to see that was coming. Because this was in, like, 1929. This was before anything even went down. And he was like, yeah, no, I'm getting out of here. One uh, global conflict was enough for him. You know what? I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna go for it. This guy murders me, he murders me. Oh, there's two of these things? No, we're escaping. I changed my mind. This is one of the hardest stars for me, and I don't know why. Oh, well, I can go here. Mario has entered owl mode. Your family came from a French island in the Caribbean. I thought you were Italian, first of all. You know what, I think it's because you live in New York. I always either... Like, when I think New York, I think Italian. So you're Italian, but you're from a French island. Things aren't adding up here, my guy. I think I'd consider visiting New York. I never finished my America story. I keep getting distracted. Okay, look, here's the deal. We're gonna do this, and then I'll tell my America story. Okay, I'll let that guy hit me. 
and then I'll do that. Okay. So the last time I went to America, I went to MAGFest, which, um, the music and gaming festival takes place in Washington, D.C. So, the last time I was in America, Washington, D.C., 2016, would you like to know the dates of MAGFest? It was on a weekend in January. I, I can tell you it's the one you think it was. I wasn't even there for that event, and the things I witnessed were just... It was a circus. At least until we got to the convention center, then everything was good. But before that, we usually go to buy groceries and stuff. For the weekend? And things were crazy. Actually, I lied. That's not the last time I was in America. I don't really count. Um, I went to a Dragon Ball tournament in Chicago a couple years ago. I don't really count that, though. Chicago really America? You tell me. What am, why would I know? I am a foreigner. I barely know where Chicago is. I thought Chicago was the state. Did you know it's not? It's Illinois. Look out. Yes is silent. Okay, here's the problem though. You want to talk about Kansas? And Arkansas? Because that really bothers me. Why is it not Arkansas? Okay, everyone hates that. The Americans are upset about Kansas, our Kansas as well. Alright. I feel a little better about that then. What are some other weird things? American accents can be weird. I'm actually surprised by this one. The first time I went to D.C., we were on the metro train system. And the guy comes on over the intercom, he starts talking. I turn to my friend, I'm like, dude, was that guy even speaking English right now? And my friend's like, oh yeah, I understood him. I'm like, what do you mean you understood him? Crazy accents differ from city to city. Yeah, I know, because, uh, one of the guys, one of the guys I used to hang out with was from, uh, one of the southern, I forget which one, but he kind of sounded like this, and he would say words like, instead of siren, he would go, well, I hear them sirens outside my house. I just kind of got used to that after a while. I hear them sirens going off outside. There's some trouble going on down the street, I reckon. I know Texas, that's like King of the Hill, Hank Hill, and he's like, Damn it, Bobby, I told you to stop touching my fence, I tell you what. What are we doing? Boat ride. Well, I could not have gone to the more wrong place. Guys, we are not supposed to be in this cave, we're supposed to be on a boat ride.
Yeah, it was really weird. I was it was either the intercom was very broken or the dude wasn't speaking English, but apparently he was. I'm trying to think other things that I had trouble with in America. Uh, ordering from Burger King, that was a rough one. Because the guy asked me what size combo I want, and that's just not a thing. So I wasn't sure, like, did he mean, did I want a large fries? Did I want, like, what did he think I wanted? It turns out, you just say, give me a large, and that's everything. Oh, I got Moose in trouble, because I did not really understand America. I like, so there's that, like, stand on your land law that some states have. I thought that was the entire country, so Moose and I are in the middle of Washington, D.C., and I have my wallet out. And he's like, oh, be careful, someone might come by on a bike and take your wallet. And very loudly, I, pro I proclaim, well, if he does that, we'll just kill him with your gun. He didn't have a gun with him. And it turns out, you're not allowed to have a gun in Washington, D.C. Why would I say that in D.C.? Because I'm a foreigner that didn't know better. Do you- at that point, do you know what I knew about America? I knew Texas and Cowboys, John Wang, Pow Pow, so that's what I went with. I know better now. Also, our media didn't help. At that point in time, I genuinely thought you were allowed to just shoot people. I thought that's how America worked. The stand on your land law, or whatever you guys have, which is only in Florida, I know that now. Florida and Georgia, I think, are the only two states that have that. Break through the floor. Okay, yeah, I know where that is. So Moose was upset with me about that. Another interesting thing I uh, found, you guys have Cherry Coke. Cherry Coke is a special occasion type thing. You don't get to see that every day. Apparently you guys do. So I wanted it at any time I saw it. And we went to a restaurant and I asked the guy, I'm like, yo, can I have a Cherry Coke? And he says to me, I can make that for you. And I was like, whoa, hold up. Let's back up a quick second. You can make Cherry Coke. Please elaborate on that. And uh, it turns out you guys have an entire job in rest. The guy like mixes sodas and makes stuff. The soda jerker. So I learned about them. He did make me a cherry coke. I was happy with that. How cheap food is in the States? That was a big culture shock, actually. The first time I saw a vending machine and a bottle of... Coke was a dollar. That was a big deal to me. You guys have a very different philosophy on vending machines. Your vending machines have real play prices in them. That was a long time ago now? Oh. 
It's like three dollars now. Okay, so you guys have you're getting ripped off like we are now. See the uh I assume the philosophy was like it's just like buying one at the store, so it's the same price. Vending machines here are for desperate situations. I do know about expensive food. I know. There's a shortage of stuff, which is weird to me. So, um... We're a massive producer of beef. That's one of our main products. And there's a shortage of it that I don't believe is real. That's neither here nor there. But for the last... Until recently, for the last four years, I couldn't buy American products. Because they just... There was a shortage, it wasn't getting exported. There was this can of soup I was uh, quite happy with. Couldn't find it. I saw it once in the last three years. So I bought the entire shelf of them. I don't know why our beef is so expensive, though. Because we produce it ourselves. Is it clam chowder? No, it's, um... It's just this Irish stew. Puritan brand Irish stew. It is made in America. I bought it because we don't really have anything like that here. We have beef soup and stuff. But it, it's like a thicker... It sounds gross? No, that's okay. I obviously could cook better than that, but it's like a quick thingy that you just put together. They're good for like 3 a.m. I want some soup type of thing. has the word Puritan in it. Yeah, I don't know what that word actually means. It's on the can. It's whatever. It's an American thing, probably. I don't really care about that. I just want the soup that has the beef and the potatoes and the celery and all that good stuff. The I don't know. See, that word means something to you. It's irrelevant to me. It's decent. Protestants? I don't know what that means either. What's a Protestant? It sounds no, I'm not gonna say that. That might be rude. I'm gonna wait for you to tell me before I say that. The religious people from Germany? Really? No, Germany is Catholic. Germany is also Catholic. Well, uh, parts of it. Are See, my family's South German. So, like, Bavaria, Wurttemberg, uh, what's the other one? Baden. Baden, Wurttemberg, uh, Bavaria. There's another South German state I don't remember at the moment. We can talk about Austria, though, because 
I was thinking about them. I strike you as a Prussian. I'm just a fan of tradition. You know, once upon a time, Germany was good. You know, it was about like, there were po poets, scholars, inventors. And that, uh, that changed. And yeah, Prussia as a entity doesn't really exist anymore. Most of Prussia is in Poland. And a lot of, a lot of, yeah, a lot of it just isn't German land anymore. And it never really was. Because prior to, um, I think it was the Napoleonic War. I think that's where Poland got fucked over and we took all their land. Russia helped. I think that was the Napoleonic War. I could be wrong. But Russia had a vested interest in that. They also owned part of Poland. So they were like, well, maybe we shouldn't have a Poland. And then Prussia just kind of agreed. I have no idea how to get these coins. I could get one. That's good enough. Poland was once the largest kingdom. No, you are wrong. You are thinking of Poland, Lithuania. Nah, you're probably right. I like Poland a lot. Uh, they don't get the respect they deserve. They saved Europe like 17 times throughout their history. And I don't know if people really acknowledge that. Not even that long ago. It wasn't even a hundred years ago. The last time they, uh, they manned up. Just like the Winged Hussars? No, after that, uh, after World War I, uh, the communists in Russia were like, everyone's weak, let's go into Europe. And then Poland pretty much 1v1 them. And won. And then in World War II, they fucking stomped us for a while. Germany outnumbered them, uh, 59 to 1. And it took- it took Germany longer to get Poland to surrender than it took to get France to surrender. Where are you getting this history? That's real. There was a Polish, a Polish Soviet war right after World War One in the 1920s. Do a quick Google search. I almost called it Goggle. You didn't know about that? Nah, Poland's cool. In World War speaking of World War II, they also had a bear in their army. He's my favorite uh, historical figure from World War II. Wojtek. And you might wonder, what did a bear do in World War II? Oh, he must have mauled people. Nope, that man loaded the artillery.
He did drink and smoke, and he could salute on command. He, w he was one of the boys. I'm surprised there isn't a Sabaton song about him yet. I know it's been requested a lot. Oh, I'm remembering something about this level. Uh, so the coins in this level are not fun because there's just barely enough of them. We're gonna have to go uh, some desperate measures to get these coins. You guys really distracted me. I was going to talk about how I wasn't a big fan of Austria, and uh, I ended up talking about how great Poland is. That's a country I want to visit. Poland, not Austria. Did miss a few blue coins. Yeah. I don't know how to get the rest of them. That's... it's unfortunate. Food was very good in Poland? Yeah, they're good for that, too. You can find good food anywhere in Europe except for... the UK? Unless you get very specific things in the UK. And... I think they're the only ones that suck at food. Which is actually kind of offensive to me, that they're bad at food. Because you gotta think- let's think about the British. What did they do? They spent their entire... career as an empire conquering a good two-thirds of the world. And in that entire time, all the places they went, everything they discovered, and in that entire time, it's like a 200 year history, they never figured out spices that entire time. Ironically, the best chef in the world is from... UK. He's Scottish, though. Here we go. Nah, even the even the British have some good shit. I can imagine being drunk at like four in the morning and getting a sausage sausage roll. Which is, uh, for Americans, imagine a corn dog. London ranks second or third in Michelin stars, though. Yeah, that's one man who is the best chef in the world. My man, Gordon Ramsay. Did I get the star, guys? I did, right? I didn't. I, I just- I genuinely just left. I'm gonna double check now. I know you're- I know you're lying. I got the coin star. That's what I meant. He doesn't have very many Michelin stars in London. Most of his are in the U.S. Uh, I'll believe you because I don't actually know. I just know I like Gordon Ramsay. He's a really good dude. Uh, American television makes him look... ...not good.
If you worked in the industry, you'd understand, though. Because a lot of the people that are on Hell's Kitchen, they're like, I have 20 years experience as an executive chef, and they can't cook scallops. You know how hard it is to cook a scallop? Not very. It takes like three minutes. And these people with 20 years experience can't do it. And they show the part after he's given them an hour of time to do it. But like, he'll, he'll watch them do it, and then he'll freak out when they fuck up the easiest thing. So they'll show you all that stuff. But, uh, if you ever actually talk to the man, he's a really cool down-to-earth guy. He's a real jokester, too. No, the UK does have some really good things, though. Actually, I might be wrong. That might be Ireland. Shepherd's Pie, is that UK or Ireland? Because that's a hit right there. That's really good. That's Ireland. Okay, never mind. And then my people, we have some good stuff, you know, schnitzel. Can't go wrong with a breaded fried piece of, uh, meat. You know, that's just obvious, easy. We also have, uh, rouladen, which is... It's meat rolled around vegetables? And then it's, uh, braised. I don't think we need to mention Italy. They're top tier food. Top tier food. I can't say France has good food though. That's just, I'm culturally obligated to say France sucks. It, it's in the contract. UK was kind of a dick to Ireland history. You are understating that quite a bit. Aw, oh, man. I didn't even do the jump. Why am I here? It, uh, this level's awful, and I'm having fun. Guys, do you want to have fun or not? Let's go have fun instead. We'll go to the jungle level instead. You know what food is underrated? Just in general, the entire region? Africa. A lot of people sleep on the different African, uh, cuisine. African cuisine is awesome. Yeah, a lot of people sleep on it, too. It's nuts. I don't know what any of the actual things are called, unfortunately, but I know uh, it's an Ethiopian thing. They give you... It's almost like a pancake. And then you have, uh, like, a curry with it. Are you, are you a good guy? He's a good guy. Unfortunately, I'm very weak when it comes to African foods. I can't tell you any of uh, the names of any of the stuff. I know about them, though. Maybe I, I should learn. I might explore that a little bit.
And then India has good food, but that's- a lot of people know that. A lot of people are sleeping on Africa, though. Yeah, try Ethiopian food. You're in New York. I know for a fact there's an entire block in New York that's, like, authentic African. Like, all the restaurants and everything. And I know that because I looked it up because I want to go there. I just want to... I need to go to New York. I just want to go there and eat food. And try not to get stabbed because it's New York. Well, actually, I guess in those kind of places, you're less likely to get stabbed than you are in, like, Manhattan or something. The opposite? I don't know. You know what? When I go to New York, I'm just gonna use you as a tour guide. You were in New York a few months ago? There's a couple places I need to go in the States. I need to go to Pittsburgh, because they have the, um... They have the aviary. The biggest aviary in North America. I like birds. Everybody knows this. I'm, I'm a big fan of birds. I want to go to Texas. To go to some barbecue places. You know, that's my... Uh, if you were to ask me what my religion is, and this is like one of the few things... I can give America credit for. American barbecue is second to none. Maybe, maybe Korea can compete with America when it comes to barbecue. But no, you guys, you guys are crazy at that. Oh man. I know that's doable. I did it on the wrong. Yeah, this one, you have just enough height to do a triple jump and get that. Through shenanigans. You don't like Korean barbecues much? They give you guys a run for your money though. It is a different flavor profile, but it's a lot of the same concepts and a lot of the same things. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. It's not a bad taste, it's just not your style. Oh, I got it. You need to try a New York hot dog. Since I'm talking about... We're talking about Asian food a little bit. There's a hot dog cart in... I almost said Varrock. There's a hot dog cart in Vancouver that, um... I don't know if it still exists. It's called Japa Dog. It's uh, owned by a Japanese man. Obviously, you know, they called it, like, Japa Dog. And, um, he does, like, a New York-Japanese fusion type thing. And it looked very interesting. And I hope he's still open. I don't know if I'd ever actually go. There are a few Japa Dog rep restaurants in Vancouver, so they might be the same. Well, in that case, I'm very glad he expanded.
See, I don't know if I'd get a hot dog with seaweed on it, but he does other stuff. Like, you can get Japanese spicy mayo on a hot dog. I can see that working. I don't know. I'd keep an open mind, I think. I might try some things that I personally think wouldn't work, but... See, the problem is seaweed does something weird to my teeth. It doesn't hurt my teeth, it just it has a weird texture. It does like a weird clicking, and I don't like the clicking. Oh, this fella's gonna ruin my life. Nope, we got past him. It's not too late for him to ruin everything, though. No, nope, we're good. Yeah, that's where I want to get the beehive. There's a star in here. I have a weird one for you, because it's a fast food place. When I was in America, I wanted to try Chick-fil-A. I think we have those now, but we didn't at the time. You know what else I want to try, but Moose wouldn't let me, which kind of pissed me off? Yoohoo Soda. Which, if I understand right, it's carbonated chocolate milk. I told Moose I wanted some, he wouldn't let me have any. We have two Chick-fil-A? Okay, I'll take a look around then. You who sucks. I know. I can tell you it sucks just by the concept of carbonated chocolate milk. That's not the point, though. I wanted to try it. Bad spot. Nope, everything's good. Even as a concept, I can just tell you that doesn't work, but I wanted to try it. Oh, you're going to bed? Alright, see you later. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, 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 and we fell to the bottom of the sea. Uh, we could go for a different star, maybe? What are some other states I want to visit? There's not really many. And it's always about food. Oh, I need to go to Kentucky to go to, like, the actual KFC. The mansion. The one that's in the mansion. Hey, nobody, do you want to go on a road trip to that? You're gonna say no, because you're too high blood for a KFC. You do want to see it? Because, like, I could take a bus to New York, and then we could drive there. I think Kentucky... You, I always think it's a southern state, but it's deceptively north. Alright, tell you what. We have... Oh, oh no, I'm dying. I need a drink. Oh no.
Okay, we're good. I salvaged it. Tell you what, we'll kill Bowser, and then I think, uh... I think we may just call it a night. This is probably my favorite level. Because I like Super Mario World, and, uh... Yeah, you just jump right into the castle. Okay, so... You see all this stuff right here? Doesn't matter, you can do this. And then we do a grandma jump to get up here. And then it's more of the same. This should have been the first Bowser stage, in my opinion, because it's a lot easier than uh, the Swamp World. You know, Swamp World has insta-kill sand. Insta-kill sand is uh, more difficult to deal with than lava. You need to go this way first. We're supposed to go underneath. I'm gonna not do that. I'm gonna go this way. Making these assets must have been a bitch. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Realistically, you're just taking the sprites from Super Mario World and turning it into a texture. Even I could do that. Like, I don't think it's that bad. The castle itself might have been a little more difficult. I'm trying to think, what other states should I visit? I got Texas on my list. Texas, New York. Yeah, New York's a state. Um... One of the Carolinas, it's another... One or both, I forget which one. I know for sure one of them is a big barbecue place. They both probably are. Don't visit South Carolina? Okay. I think it's north anyway that I wanted to go to. Shit, I gotta remember what that barbecue restaurant was called. There's one, it's owned by like the champion of uh, all the barbecue competitions. Go to Florida? No, I'm good. There's nothing in Florida I care about. Actually, that's not entirely true, but I wouldn't do it. I like the idea of spearfishing for lionfish, but I wouldn't actually go do- I'd be the guy on the boat that just hangs out and gets drunk and when people come up with the fish, I cook them. Well, I don't know if I make it off of that jump. That's the one good thing I know about Florida, is, uh... There's all these invasive species that are edible. Like, if you want, you can go and, like, kill iguanas, and you can eat iguanas. If iguanas aren't your thing, there's lionfish. There's invasive crabs, there's all kinds of stuff. You know what invasive animals we have here? We have, like, weird rabbits and squirrels. There's one species of crayfish that's invasive, but it's not edible.
Carp is another good one. A lot of people think they're not edible, but they are. It's got a lot of bones. You gotta get rid of them. There's techniques to get rid of them, because they're they've been such a problem they had to make it easier. So now people are actually there's incentive to kill them. Because before it was just like, well there's a lot of carp, but you can't eat them, so why bother? You have no idea what's invasive here. Well, you're in the city, so... Like... I don't know, raccoons? No, you know what we have that's invasive? And you probably have it too? We have these tiny... Inedible clams. Zebra mussels. They provide nothing. And we also have lamprey eels, which are also not edible. They're just annoying because when you catch a fish, you have to burn you have to burn them off of the fish. And then you kill them. I can't remember if we did this. If you don't burn them off of the fish, they'll take a big chunk off of the fish. And that's not good for anyone. They also bite you. That's why you burn them? Like I caught, I caught a guy. We'll get this star, and then we'll probably call it. 55 stars? That's not a bad number. Although, I'm tempted to get 60. And you know what I realized? Actually, I didn't... 1, 2, 3, 4... Yeah, I did. I missed the ghost world. Guys, we still gotta do the ghost world. Over here, this world, the ghost world? I missed the ghost world. Yeah, I gotta go, too. But we did miss the ghost world. I'm kind of sad we missed the ghost world. But it is what it is. We missed the ghost world. <laughs> 